Yes. Uh, so now we are going to analyze embed TLS, which is an open source suite of cryptographic algorithms written in C. In this case, it is a project of a realistic size, almost 400 source files. And we are going to use a compile command JSON file to analyze um, this project. So uh, in this case, as I said before, we are going to use uh, GCC as the target compiler. Um, uh, oh. And let's choose the first one, GCC uh, 11. The same for C++ and Fortran doesn't matter because we are not going to analyze Fortran file here, but let's go with uh, the sheet Fortran. Um, good, so now we start uh, as always with the screen report, BW report dash dash screening. And in this case, we're going to use the uh, compile commands, as I said, so dash dash config and the path to the compile command JSON file, which is located at bell, compile commands, and let's add dash dash show progress. So we see the analysis events over the list of files. Uh, nice. Well, this version in of Kodi, we are ignoring files that are repeated in the, in the compile command JSON file. And so in order to generate these compile commands, uh, JSON file, we only have to add one flag to the CMake invocation. So we have um, an, a script with the CMake invocations to generate the, the binaries for embed TLS. And so if we want to generate the compile commands, we only have to add this flag, CMake export compile, compile, compile commands equal one equal on. And um, so with this build, this build system, CMake, we can generate these compile commands that, and natively without requiring any three part, third party tool like uh, Verb for the case of make files. And the compile commands looks like this. It is basically a list of, um, of files in the JSON format um, with all the compiler flags that are needed to compile them. So Kodi now is uh, consuming this compile commands JSON file and is analyzing each of the files and following the dependencies among them. Uh, just as a reminder, this embed TLS uh, demo is provided in the performance demos uh, repository. It's a public repository that we um, provide, uh, which you can find this script, benchmark uh, embed TLS vector uh, bash script, that you can run it and you will, you will basically see on the screen all of the steps of this demo aut automatically. And you can uh, look at the script and see the steps. So this is the result of the screening report. So um, it took less than two minutes for 263 source files that were analyzed, more than 200,000 lines of code, which uh, well, we have an issue here because this number should be less than this one. But uh, so let's go to the number of checks, 233 uh, checks report. So again, potential performance optimizations that we can apply to the code and 71 are related to vectorization. Um, so now we are going to focus the analysis on the aes.c function, uh, sorry, file. Um, in this case, we are not using a, a profiler because embed TLS is a suite of different files with different uh, algorithms independently uh, between them. Uh, so we choose this aes.c for this demo. Uh, let me show you. So, I don't know. Library. Yes, let's see that line. Oh, this is broken. Well, 
and the Yeah, this is the, um, the function that we're going to focus on, the AES grid XTX. And I see that uh, I have the pragmas here, so I need to clean it. Sorry, but um, it should be clean. Yes, but well, let's let's proceed with the screen reports of the AES.c file and dash dash variables. So we increase the verbosity level and the details. Yeah, we need to clean these fragments. Let's do it manually now. Maybe you can do it as usual with the Git repo. If it is. Uh, yeah, but I can handle it if we remove them. Okay. Because after you run the script launch the dot sh, um, this script will be updated by PW uh, directives automatically. Um, when you run the screen report again, it won't uh, report the vectorization opportunities because the, the code is already vectorized by Peter directives. So now we repeat the screen report and now we see uh, that this one, so this is the output of uh, the same screen report, but over the AES.c file. So ignoring the rest of files of the, of the suite. 21 checks, 11 are uh, related to vectorization. And in this case, uh, in the screening verbose mode, we see the, the third table uh, on, on this way. So it is separated in two with auto and guided uh, sections. So the most important part here is this auto section, which is um, listing functions that can be automatically optimized by Cody. So far, uh, yesterday and today, uh, we were working with the guidance mode of Cody. So Cody helps us uh, by identify performance issues and guiding us on how to manually rewrite them. But in this case, uh, with this auto mode, Cody can identify and apply the performance uh, fix automatically. Uh, in this case, it's listing functions that can be automatically optimized. So in this case, we're going to uh, automatically optimize this one, AES create XTX, which consists of five loops uh, with five vectorization opportunities. And we proceed with the auto mode, following the first suggestion to directly run PW directives without going to the checks report. So um, this auto mode will automatically scan and optimize the code uh, using vectorization uh, pragmas for OpenMP in place. Uh, so the code will be rewritten and the same uh, input file. Uh, yeah, we, we need to specify which is the function that we want to optimize and it's this one. So a colon and the name of the function. Uh, Okay, so uh, this is the output of PDI directives auto. Uh, in this case, the first column <clears throat> is, uh, is the report of GCC uh, 11, that is our target comp compiler that we selected with, um, uh, with the configuration wizard. And it's telling us that GCC did not automatically vectorize any of the loops of this function, but Cody could do it for us for four of them. So this auto uh, label means that Cody automatically insert OpenMP pragmas in this case. And if we look at the code, 
Now we see that the pragmas are here again because Peter Direct is inserted them. And well, uh, this is how we get this vectorized version automatically by just two invocations, one of uh, the screen report and one of Peter Directives Auto. I'm letting this file to uh, be without the pragmas. So we run the, the script. Uh, Patch launch because this script will automatically uh, run the original version. It will apply PDR directives again and uh, will run the vectorized version, uh, showing you at the bottom of the output the, the results. Um, if we left the pragmas uh, as, as we had it. Uh, before my manual, my last manual rewriting, uh, you won't see any difference in, in the results of the script because the original version will have already the the CMD pragmas. So it is running. In the meantime, we can comment a little bit the output. So what you can see if you scroll up in PW directives in auto mode, it starts the report a bit up. I, that, I think it first tells you what is the version of the compiler that is being used, TCC. The optimization flags uh, that they use for rewriting, these are obtained from the compile command JSON. This means that the maintainers of this project have decided that they're in release mode, the software is compiled with minus O2 with GCC. Okay. In the flags for verification, OD behind the scenes is running GCC. It's, it's um, producing the, the vectorization and optimization report of GCC and parsing that output. And from there, it infers NA. If you scroll down in the output, you can see the results, what NA means. NA means that the output of the compiler did not report any information about the loop. The loop may have been fully enrolled, the loop may have been replaced by a call, but if that is the case, Kodi has a specific uh, reasons that you can see in that table. No and call within parentheses in the left. Yeah, no call. For instance, that means that in the report of GCC, the compiler reported that loop, typically that can be replaced with a mem set, was removed and replaced by a mem set. If it says unroll, the, the other one says that the compiler has reported that it was fully unrolled. We have found cases where a fully unrolled loop is as lower that a short that a loop with short trip count vectorized. So as this depends on many things beyond the compiler or beyond Kodi or the source code itself, um, that's something that definitely you need to, to, to benchmark. So going up again, what you can see then is that by, inspect, by analyzing and parsing the report produced by TCC, Kodi in the column TCC 11 for each loop, what's the reason of uh, what happened with a loop reported by the compiler? Of course, if you change your compiler version, or you change your compiler flags, this column can report completely different things. Okay. Based on that, those loops that are NA or not vectorized, Kodi tries to vectorize. In this case, it's all the loops. So Kodi sub for some of them reports that it Kodi cost model says this doesn't make this will, won't be profitable. And when the cost model says this can be profitable, then it reports auto or yes. Auto is I can rewrite it. Yes, is that requires some manual intervention still, okay? But the code, but the loop can be vectorized, but with some rewriting that is beyond the Kodi capabilities today. Kodi rewrites the code and tries to run again the compiler to verify if this is running faster or not. But again, all of these messages about the compiler rely on the report produced by the compiler. 
And here just that we saw many differences between the GCC report, very difficult to understand, the NVIDIA report, very clean, very structured. Intel report is also very structured. So depending on the compiler, this information can be completely precise, or sometimes the compiler can even report contradictory messages. We have one use cases where the compiler reported, I vectorized this loop, and I did not vectorize the same loop. So this is the type of information you get in this auto mode to get a complete picture of all the loops in your function, what the compiler is doing, what code can do be to, to be a complement to the compiler. Okay. And the plan is to extend this to, why not, me um, memory optimizations. If the compiler can report that applied memory interchange, loop interchange, then register it here. Now we have this infrastructure, this platform, to integrate Kodi with their compiler. This can be extended to GPU messages, to memory messages, or to any other messages reported by the compiler. But we started with vectorization and related reasons that inhibit vectorization. Any questions about this? So does it uh, read the make files that, I mean, the typical, you know, configure scripts create uh, instead of this JSON or? Kodi doesn't read the make file. Kodi doesn't read the CMake. Kodi, you need to use CMake and make files with the JSON, with the bird tool. And you can produce this compilation database. It's a JSON file that you can see on the right. There is a listing of all your files of the project, the root to the path to the file, the oh. invocation in the system, the compiler and all the flags needed to compile. Hundreds of files may require tens or hundreds of different flags. So here you have each file, all the flags that are needed. So Kodi consumes this. Okay. So you can produce this. This is a standard uh, compilation database representation supported by LVM, supported by CMake, by Ninja, by make files through the bird tool. So there are ways to produce this from your build system. Any other questions? You have the results. Um, so this is the, the result for the original version. And this is the result of the vectorized version by Cody. This is a performance improvement of around 20%. You can run this on Perlmutter uh, by uh, running the launch script. Or you can do it on your uh, laptop with the performance demo script that we provide to you the link in the chat, as I see. We can uh, run all of the steps of this demo automatically in the script and you will see the result on your machine. 